is the only music that is totally creative. Every time you hear an artist in jazz, you see and hear creation all the time. It's the closest thing that you can get to the creator. And I think that's it. <laughs> With blue satin sashes, snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes, brown paper packages, tied on a string. These are a few of my favorite things. When the dog bites, when the beast eats, when I'm feeling sad. Sad reality is that this is one of the finest pianists in the business. She's one of the finest pianists in the business, and she doesn't get work in this town. She works here, and that's just a damn. Com that's a sad commentary on the jazz industry in New York City. You have one of the finest pianists in the business, and she doesn't get work in this town. Well, this is a labor of love. This is family. Well, yeah, of course. Uh, this is not yeah, that's work. Why, that's, <laughs> why, that's why I created this. Yes. So we can do our show. is called Two Old Pros on the Piano. Uh huh. And what we do is authentic. Uh huh. And in my opinion. Most of the clubs today are not booking authentic, particularly authentic old school black entertainment. They want a watered down version of what we created. And so we are not in that mix. But because I have the wherewithal and God guides me, I created this. And it's worldwide. And this is very special what we're doing here. This is, this is true history. I don't believe in just complaining about something. I believe in making a change and making it happen. And I've created Jerome's probably jazz for that reason. So people like us, the real talent, could get work in this town. Force of the internet's early days, especially for our generation. Oh yeah. That it has begotten its own like demonic underground. Neopets has a black market. It is ridiculous. Ex expand, like expound on that. I would be happy to. Is it okay if I take off my coat? Absolutely, it's hot as fuck yeah, in, here. in here. I am sweating. Every time we cut to your face, I wipe my brow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna put this. Dungeons and Dragons right shirts, here. fucks with that. Dungeons and Dragons, right? I figured let's, let's just go full nerd. Today. Absolutely. Let's Absolutely. Get my Neopets. Let's embrace it. There we go. So in 2007, when they when they pushed the conversion of the pets to so they could do customization, I check my notes. Hold on. That's fine. It's good. Oh, you came prepared. You came, came more prepared. prepared than either me or Leo did. You see how Leo's not participating at all? Sorry, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't shame him too hard because he is actively trying to switch between two perspectives all the time and make sure that nothing else falls apart. <laughs> oh, but yeah, you know, props to Leo. You could just shout out. You do have a microphone. It just sucks that your microphone's on the other side of yeah. everything else you have to do. Yeah, it's, it's, it, you know, it's, we're, we're, a learning, we're a learning process, you know. Oh, it's great. No, this is why it's a team effort, right? But, That's right. It takes a village. <laughs> So, 227 different color species combinations. Um, if you had a pet that was, what was one of those color species combinations, you were, at the time of the conversion, you were able to decide whether or not you wanted to use the new artwork. But it, it was like, once you switched, like, that was it. Like, your pet was converted. Like, that's it. There's no going back. Right. So, any pet that existed pre that date and was one of those colors, it's considered, is usually considered unconverted. And So, it's like a Schrodinger's pet? Like it exists in both states at once. No, because you can't put clothes on it. Oh no! Yeah, oh, you can't put okay. clothes. It exists ex like instead of like actually interacting with like the different like layers of like customization, it is just its own layer. And like the like, because there's like environment like items that you can put like backgrounds and foregrounds, and then there's like the actual clothes like, and you just that's just a layer. The pet color, the pet picture is just a layer that you like put like backgrounds and foregrounds right like in front of and behind. And that's so, it, you can't put clothes on it. So unconverted, you're saying that means that you're either switching from the old art style to the new art style, right? Yes. So unconverted, that's what I'm saying, when, it's like, when I say like Schrodinger's pet, does that mean like, could you like not convert it and have it remain the old art style? Yes. Does that make it more valuable that way? Does it ever. So, okay. That is so this the is only the black, value. Right. So this is the black market yeah. value. The black market value is in the fact that it is the old artwork and you can't get that anymore. And so the pet... How's it going, sister? I shall not flirt with the contestants, Satan. Okay, okay. All right, first question. Granny McGrath, how are you? 
I'm doing well. Okay, how much wood would Woodchuck Chuck Chuck wood Chuck could Chuck wood? Uh, um, Time's up. Delaware. True or false? True. Wrong. How long did it take to rescue little Timmy, who Emily kicked down a well the other day? Why would Emily do such a thing? Well, let's ask God for the answer. Little Timmy was stuck in that well for eight hours. Wish it was more. I'm sure you do. All right. First up, Emily. What's the capital of Uzbekistan? Fuck Uzbekistan. Wow, what the fuck they ever do to you? Don't worry about it. All right. How many beatings did Sister Miranda deliver during her years at the convent? Is she even allowed to do that? If she was beating you, then I don't see why not. After all, she specializes in spanking. Is it 20? Nope, it's 103. What? All right, third question. What's my favorite color? Mm, I'll go with pink. That's correct, actually. I thought you'd say red. They always say red. All right. Sister Miranda, how are you doing? Oh, okay. Satan, right. what did I just tell you? Okay, okay. All right, sweetheart. If one train leaves London at 4.30 p.m. going 50 miles per hour and another from Manchester at 2 p.m. going 80 miles per hour, at what time will both trains cross each other? Um... Wrong! How does a bicycle stay up? Oh, I know this one. The gyroscopic effect. Wrong. God, what's the answer? Because I deem it so! Last question. What did Granny McGrath put in the cookies and milk she fed her grandkids every day? Um, cinnamon? Wrong. It's Ambien. Ooh, That's no. right. Granny McGrath laced all her cookies with drugs. And the milk. My favorite beverage. All right. So I guess our winner for today is Emily Stamby, who answered yes. one question out of everyone. Everybody hates fucking resellers. They're the worst people. I hate myself for reselling too, but shit, I need money. And there's Eddie. Eddie, I'm here for the for the North Face drop for the Supreme, you know? We gotta get that. We, have, we must get that. Must touch that. I'm mean, pretty normal resellers is, you know, everybody gotta make their money, you know? Somehow, one way or another, you gotta make your money, no matter what. Uh, I'm picking up for myself. I don't, I'm not really, you know, like, big on the resale thing right now. Like, I mean, I understand why people do it. I, like, I get that. It's a money thing. It's gonna help you out if you need the money or whatever, but like, at the same time, it brings a lot of attention to this whole thing, you know what I'm saying, so. Well, at first, when I was working at uh, 42nd Street, a restaurant named Bubba Gumps, uh, I just saw a whole bunch of people wearing it, and at first, I thought it was fucking stupid. Then I did my research. As soon as I got fired, I was broke as hell, and I didn't know people wanted my items for much more than what I paid for, so then I just started selling it. Yeah, but it makes me wonder, like, would I feel any differently if she lived here in New York with me and my parents? Different, like, how? I'm not sure. Like, yes, yeah, her experience is valuable, but do I value it more because it's rarer? You know, like, like if she'd lived down the block, would I take it as seriously? That's a tough question to answer, honestly. Uh, I don't know. Maybe if she lived down the block like that, then her advice would sound less like weird sound bites and more like actual guidance in your life. But I don't know. Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, I have friends who've always had their families nearby. And they're close and some that definitely aren't. Right? I feel like family's weird, man. You know, you don't get to pick your family and nobody has it the same. You just kind of get stuck with what you got and you make the best of it. Yeah, I know. It's just that I wish we'd gotten the opportunity to be closer, not close to our families. Like, we didn't get the choice, you know? We just can't be close because we're not close. Yo. No time. Yeah, I think we might be getting a little too fresh out here. So, do you smell that? 
Yeah. Yo, we should get out of here. Let's. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. All right, because I'm seeing a lot of red, and uh, did you know that red is a sign of anger and danger and fear? Mm -hmm. You know, many psychologists yeah, uh, they, uh, they find that red causes paranoia, stress, fear. Yeah, yeah, no, no, don't worry about it. Trust me, I've done this tens of times, hundreds of times. People do this all the time. Don't worry, it's it's fine, it's fine. We got this. Uh, any guards on north, we got two veg heads trying to get fresh in the ninth floor tower. And, and these, these little bike lanes that they have kind of run straight through the city. Uh, which is great, because like, you know, those are kind of the major avenues that you want to go up and down, and, you know, it works for you. Um, There's always somebody in the bike lane, though. Yeah, there is. I remember for a while, uh, when, like, bike lanes started to pop up, there were people who were, like... Oh, we have a bike lane here now, too. Yeah we, said. yeah, we do. There's a lot of, in the local Facebook groups so with the local neighborhood people, there's a lot of complaining about them. And I like to, uh, I don't know about stir the pot, but I like to, like, you know, throw my opinion and there be like, you know, in I'm, our glad, neighborhood. I'm glad that I am not dying yeah, because of those. You're right, but in our neighborhood, there were people who were throwing thumbtacks into the bike lane because they were so upset about them. Yeah, there's a lot of really... They were, like, trying to hurt cyclists, like, deliberately. Yeah. That's so yeah. fucked. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really glad about that bike lane because the bike lane goes up and down Skillman and, and 43rd, 43rd Avenue. Avenue. And last year, about this time, actually, um, I was doored on on skillman coming down the the bottom of the hill really yeah and that's that's when i had my sling and I, I had a fractured elbow from that from that dooring really yeah and that's because that it wasn't a protected bike lane at that point it was just a, a shared bike lane right which means that the bikes just uh stay in the same like the bikes and the cars stay, sh share the same lane and the rule is that the car is supposed to to not overtake the bike right but that you know no one ever this is that um, but I'm really glad that we got these protected bike lanes now because, you know, I can, you know, freely and, and fastly drive down that, that area without having to worry about getting doored. Like, I mean, I used to worry about getting doored, though. I mean, but there's enough space. Like, if I ride the, if I ride the edge of the, like, the, the bike lane, like, a door cannot open in front of me. Like, that's how far the doors 